Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and today we're going to learn how to do some general maintenance on your paintball markers. Okay, so we're looking at a die dam right now. Uh, we're going to go through it, break it all apart so you guys can see the insides and look for some uh, common problem positions or problem points on the gun. The uh, I've already removed a bunch of stuff, so the, the stock, the foregrip, the mag, uh, the front shroud, the barrel, I took all that stuff off earlier so that uh, I wouldn't have to do it while talking to you guys. So let's get it all out of the way over here and we'll focus on this. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this, uh, the mag well, and then I'm going to take the bolt out as well. So to get the mag well out, there's four screws and these screws are actually the longest of the screws that are on the gun. So. Um, as you get used to your dam and taking it apart, you'll notice that there's really three different length screws that you'll see. These longer ones, a medium one, and then a shorter version. And the long ones go in to hold the magwell in place. And when I say long, they're actually not that long. I mean, they're that long. And then these are the medium length ones like that. this out. Now the magwell covers the eye wiring as well. So when we take the magwell off and put the magwell on, we want to be super careful that we don't pinch any of the wiring that's on there. So as I slide this down, I'm just going to be aware of where my wires are. You can see there's part of the eye wire right there. And there's another section of the eye wire right here. And it's going to slide off. When we go to put this back on, you never just want to jam it up on here uh, because it's really easy to pinch these wires on both sides right there and then ruin your eye wire so just be very careful not so much when you're taking it off but when you're putting it on definitely be careful with that all right so that'll come out of there we will uh, take the grips off of here um, we're gonna do this the, the right way there's other ways to do this where you can just pull everything off of there but we're gonna do this the right way I have already pulled these wires uh, and uh, release them from the screw. What I'll mean by that is on this setup right here, there's a set screw that goes into the frame right here. As you can see, it's going to sit there. Now, typically, when we're all done and we have this thing back together to the point where we're going to go out and play, the eye or the uh, solenoid wire, so the power wire, is split into two pieces, the, the red and the black, and then this screw goes over the top of it and it holds it down like that. You can see the, the screw splits the wire and holds it down uh, to keep it from pulling, or the battery from pulling this and then disconnecting it from the solenoid. So we're gonna remove this screw for now. We're gonna lift our wiring up and we are going to unscrew this rear frame screw and the frame will come off. Now this is the only screw that holds the frame on once we have removed the magwell. The magwell has two screws right here, one on this side, one on this side. They come through the front of the well and they hold the front section of the frame in place. So we're going to pull that apart like that. Now we can disconnect this and then slide it all away. If this wire was still um, screwed in or, or uh, tightened down, when we pull this away, it would just automatically pull that out of there. So we, wanna, we don't want to yank that out. We want to slide it out, remove it by hand, and then slide it the rest of the way down. So that takes care of that. Let's take the bolt out. It is possible to loosen that by hand and just, I like to just get it started with the Allen key. And then you can turn it the rest of the way out by hand. All right. So here's our whole bolt. Now for the dam, they don't use an LPR. 
in this gun, but their bolt assembly has been uh, combined in two, two pieces. You've got your bolt and then you have your regulator. So they have made it into one complete unit, their bolt assembly. Whenever you are unscrewing or screwing the bolt into the gun, you want to be aware that it is very possible that you are disconnecting or unscrewing the bolt assembly as you are um, taking it out. Really won't happen when you're putting it in, but as you're taking it out, because you have to turn it like this to unscrew the bolt from the gun, what can happen is you're actually unscrewing the, the, the sections of the bolt. So you can see right here, we've unscrewed this part right here uh, a couple turns. So if we just, you know, pulled the bolt out and we're done with it, and then we're going to go back in and start uh, um, uh, putting the gun back together and, and seeing if it works, this is going to leak. We need to make sure that these are all screwed back together completely before we start and move ahead from there. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, make sure your bolt is assembled properly before we go in there. For bolt maintenance, we're going to do a little bit of that right now. Let me get a towel over here. We're going to wipe down all the grease that was on the gun. So get rid of everything that was on the gun when you pull it out. And this is just good rule of thumb for any, any spool valve setup. Clean off the old grease, put on new grease. We're not going to put on new grease because I, well, we could add some, I have some grease up here that we can use. Um, and then we'll disassemble it and look at it. Put we'll this all apart. All right. So we're going to separate the main sections of our bolt here, if possible. Sometimes doing it by hand is a little difficult, especially if it's uh, been a while since the gun has been apart. It won't want to turn. And these parts right here, if you grab this by hand and try to turn this, these parts will just grind your skin right off. So. I don't recommend holding onto that and cranking on it. Put, uh, grab onto it with something, because it will, it will save the skin. Let's see if I can get this off of here. This one might fight me. It is. So this is our bolt structure here. This is our reg structure back here. Um, leaks that you'll see. If you have a leak coming down the middle of the bolt right here, there's a couple things you want to look at. This blue o-ring that's on the inside right there you want to look at. And then also, you have to unscrew the tip of the bolt off to get it out of this front can here. This red o-ring. As you see right here, this is called the sail o-ring. And then on the inside of the can, there's an orange one that you can see inside there, that o-ring. Those will all manifest as a leak that is coming either down the middle of the bolt or around the outside of the bolt right here. Um, this outside of the bolt can also be these green o-rings on here, so you wanna check those too. But down the middle, check that one and the blue one on the inside. On the outside of the bolt, check obviously the ones we talked about, but the outside green ones as well. If you have a leak coming out the back, uh, it could be these O-rings or it could be a problem with the regulator itself. So while we've got this out here, I'm just gonna kinda look over it. Clean anything up that looks like it needs to be cleaned.
Excuse me. This one feels like it's got a little bit of grind to it. So I just want to look and make sure there aren't any metal shavings in there. No dirt or debris. I'm not really, I wasn't feeling it on the, the slide itself, just on the bolt or on the housing. Not really on the bolt. So I'm just going to clean it up again, screw it together. That's better. All right, so that's going to then go together like this and screw all the way down. Now, when it comes to the regulator, if you've got reg issues, velocity issues, um, problems with uh, the, you get a leak like coming through the frame, like underneath the body coming that isn't the solenoid, uh, it could be the regulator that is at fault. Now the reg, getting it apart can be a little bit more tricky because you do need uh, a larger wrench. There's two flat spots right here. And then this can pull it apart, Let's see if I can get it. I don't have a large wrench up here. So that's not gonna come apart, that's okay. We can pull the regulator apart and replace the reg seat inside of there or the piston housing. Um, let me just make sure I don't have one. This one might be wide enough. Nope, still too short. That's definitely too small as well. Uh, tell you what, we're going to pause it real quick and we're gonna grab the right size wrench for this. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went down and uh, just put an adjustable wrench on that and then loosen this up right here. This will come out right here. So we've got this housing right here. It's got nothing in it. It's just hollow down inside of there or empty. This is our piston side right here. So um, in order to get to all the guts of like the piston and everything like that, we could tap it and probably get it all to pop out this way. Now you want to do that on a hard surface and just be super careful that you're not damaging the, the circumference of that. Or we can do it a different way. If we take these set screws and we turn them out, a couple turns out, this will let us remove this back cap. This one. And take that off right there. Like so now these each of these little pins has a flat spot on it. And when we drop this back in, we want to make sure that these flat spots are sticking towards where the screw is so that the screw uh, pushes against the flat spot and holds it in place. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. You don't want it to push hard against this. You want it to be just resting next to it so that when you pull this out, it catches on this bottom foot right here. So this should be able to move back and forth like this. And that's what stops it right there. So having this open, now we can take um, this out, hopefully. Need to switch this real quick. might be just a little bit too big for this. So we'll have to use our other ones just in case. Yeah. So we're going to go with this one, which really isn't the right size, but it worked anyway. Sometimes it works better than others. So we'll pull that out of there. Now we can take our velocity adjuster out. adjuster and then we can push our um, piston out the other side. But you want to be very careful that we don't damage the piston. 
ruin it. Now, when we pop this thing out, you need to look for shims like this that need to go on this, uh, this piston assembly right here. So here's our piston, and you can see all these shim stacks, or these shims that are stacked on here. Now these shims are not flat. They are concave, and so when you stack them opposite of each other, they actually form a spring. So this will compress and flex when it is pushed on, and it will work as a spring. Uh, so instead of having a actual spring in there, you can use, they use these shims. So this is our reg seat, this black part that's on there. The piston and the seat come together to seal the regulator and to cut the airflow off. So if you have a, uh, a velocity issue or a supercharging issue or a shoot down issue, check the reg seat. If you have a leak coming from the regulator, check the piston o-ring right here and then check the, um, the o-ring that goes around the piston stem right here. And that is actually very hard to see. It's recessed down in this hole down here and it's a green, a hard green urethane o-ring. Um, see it down in there from the other side but it sits right around that hole that my finger is waving in front of and it seals around this piston when it goes through so that can be a problem also and that's probably the hardest o-ring you'll ever have to get in and out of any gun it's very tricky I have a pick that I have downstairs that is formed specifically in a shape that I like to get that o-ring in and out so um, it's a lot of trial and error so let's put this back together. Put our piston in there. Take our reg adjuster, put it in through there. Now before I screw this all the way down, I want to get the cap on. Because if I just start screwing the adjuster in, it'll just pop the piston right out. So let's put this back on. That way, the piston can't go anywhere. It can't slide out. And then uh, so we can go all the way in. So if I tighten this all the way down to right about there, that's all pressure off completely because we've sealed the piston uh, against the adjuster. I'm going to come out about five turns or so right there. Now everyone is a little different, so um, that's too far. Three turns. So Every one is a little different as far as turns. If you look in the manual, it'll say turn this amount of turns out, and it should get you a, a velocity of or a pressure of approximately such and such and such. You just kind of need to set it up the way it needs to be. So I always, uh, since this gun has no LPR, I just put it at zero and I gas the, the gun up. It'll probably leak because there's not enough pressure in it to seal everything properly. But as you increase, you just shoot and increase pressure until you get it to where it's at a working state and then uh, you go chrono it, see what happens. So I'm turning these in and I can feel the resistance right there. I do not want to bottom these out. So I'm going to back it up about a quarter turn. Go in, stop, I'm going to back up a quarter turn. Go in, stop, back it up a quarter turn. Then I'm going to test it to make sure that that goes in and out. If I try to pull on this and it gets stuck, that's because one of these screws is still too far in. Um, if I pull it and one of them pops out, well, then I know that I'm too far out. Actually, I probably need to put just a little bit of grease on these. A little bit here, a little bit here. See a lot of people over grease stuff. They really get crazy with it. You don't need to do that. Just a light coating of grease on all your O-rings and you'll be fine. Doesn't make your gun work better.
just going to set this off to the side for now. Get some more tissue. Clean my hands off. And we'll talk about the frame. So really the only thing in the frame that you're ever going to do anything with is this potential o-ring up here. This is what seals the pressure coming through the ASA to the body right here. So that's an important o-ring to have right there or to, to maintain. And then the bottom down here. So these three. So we'll get our ASA off. Tight. So let's go ahead and pull that off of there. All right. So we've popped the ASA off, three screws, and then one O ring right here. So this O ring seals between the frame and the ASA itself. So keep sure to uh, make sure that's good and uh, it's clean and, and oiled or greased. Uh, that's not an O ring that was going to move very often, so it's very rare that that O ring will go bad, but it's possible. If we wanted to do maintenance on the uh, on the ASA, we could. If we see the core down inside there, you see how it's got two holes on the left and right side of the pin in the middle. We just unscrew that. Pull the pin out and. That o-ring right there you can replace, this blue one. And there's also a yellow o-ring that is down at the bottom right there. Right here. So this o-ring sits against the bottom of this and the pin goes through that. Like that. When we um, when we put this back together, we want to make sure that this o-ring sits firmly in its little slot down at the bottom and that there's no debris or anything down in there. Feels good. So I'm going to push this down in and I'm going to use like an Allen key to make sure that it sits in its groove. I don't want it flopping around anywhere down there. I want it to sit perfectly down in there. And then I'm going to put the pin into the core before putting it down in there. Now the pin has two sides to it. Well, obviously it's got two sides to it. It's got a rounded side right here, and then it's got a flat side over here. Now the flat side goes towards the tank. The rounded side goes towards the, the lever right here. Um, so we want it to ride smoothly on the lever, so we need the rounded side to face it. So we take the flat spot, or the flat side, we push it through the core so that it is sitting like that. And then we drop the core in, O-ring side first. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it down in there. And I'm going to screw it in. I'm just going to make sure that it's snug. I'm going to push on the pin with my finger to make sure that it retracts. And then I'm going to turn the lever by hand and make sure that the pin pops up. If it does, I'm going to turn the lever back and then make sure that I can push the pin back in. And I can. So that's a uh, maintenance for that. It's very simple maintenance on these airport ASAs. That's done. I'm going to set that to the side. Now we're looking at the body. So the body's got a couple different pieces to it that you have to be careful with when you're when you're messing around with it. Uh, this transfer plug right here, uh, it can't come out. There is nothing that really holds it in place, just because it it just plugs the transfer of air coming through. Okay, so here it is. But when you take this out and put it in, it is very, 
very easy to cut these O-rings that are on here. When they slide in and they slide past this hole right here where the air is flowing from the grip into the body, this sits on both sides of that hole and creates an airtight passage so that air um, can't escape around it. When you push this in, it's so easy to clip this O-ring and it, your gun will leak every time you put it together. This happens very, very often. So as we put this in, I'm gonna watch it as it gets to the, the that section. You can actually see that in this hole right here, the O-ring is right in that hole. And if I was just to push it forward, it would catch on this outer ridge on the inside right there and it would probably cut the O-ring. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm you can do this with, with your hand. You don't need to put an Allen key in there, but it gives me something that I can use to push with. Where's my other one? There it is. So it just gives me a little bit more leverage, and I'm going to feel for the resistance right there where it's touching that outside edge, and then I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to push at the same time so that that O-ring stays in its groove. I rotate so the O-ring doesn't just... just uh, balloon out from the force of the lip right there. Rotating it will help keep it in its groove and slide past without being cut or clipped. Um, moving forward, you've got our board right here. So this is the connector for the, uh, the battery. This is our micro switch for our trigger. This is our wire for our solenoid right here. And then these are the wires for our eyes that run over here. The, uh, the board it's got three buttons on it, one, two, three. Obviously they're toggled from the outside. So the board is very straightforward. Uh, we get a lot of leaks on the dam where it sounds like it's leaking from like right in here. And it's very hard to, to diagnose leaks on the dam just because there is no way to take this frame off of the gun and run air into it. So you really can't diagnose a leak by feeling around and stuff like that because you just can't physically get to it. Um, I personally have created a little jig that I can drop onto here and I use this threaded hole to, um, to mount it onto here. I have a little block of aluminum that is here and it has a hole in it and then I have a macro fitting that I've screwed into it and um, I can drop it onto here, tighten it down with this piece with a screw coming through here and then I can hook a line up to it so I can feed air in and then I can use my hands and feel around in there. But uh, without having something like that, it's really, really hard. So if you do get a leak, uh, a leak from this area right here or it sounds like it's leaking here, you can put your ear up to the magwell and try to hear it or take the magwell off and try to feel for it. Uh, but with the frame on there, uh, it can be a little tricky. So this will be caused, a leak in this area right here will be caused either by the bolt You've got bad O-rings on the bolt that are bleeding and it's just bleeding out this area. Uh, and it kind of sounds like your solenoid's bad just because the air is coming through the area of the solenoid, not necessarily the solenoid that's bleeding. Um, or your solenoid is bleeding. Now, that could also be the bolt bleeding out through the solenoid or the solenoid is bad and it needs to be uh, serviced or replaced. So that's that, solenoid. Typically, you won't, you'll get a leak right here from those two issues, or you'll get a leak from right here, and that's from this transfer plug right here. It bleeds out this way, because they actually drill a hole all the way through, like this, and it, there's an, a hole right here in the body. So if that O-ring that we tried to uh, protect right here goes bad, it won't, you won't hear it leaking here, you'll hear it leaking right here. Yeah, all right. So that is pretty much it for the solenoid and the board. I'm gonna move these eyes out of the way for just a second. So we're gonna talk about uh, this breech assembly right here. Now the breech assembly, as you can see, it can rotate. So right now, with the slider in the forward position, it's set up for uh, mag fed or for first strike feeding. But if we slide the uh, selector back, you can see that the breech rotates around so that you could use this section right here and use a hot standard hopper. So we've got a rotator like that. Now I see people set these up 
wrong all the time. There's a very specific way to make sure that this is in the right spot, and when it rotates, it rotates to the right spot. So we're going to take it apart so that you guys can see what the right way is. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, magwell guide. So this helps guide the mag into the right spot, push the mag release on the magwell so that it starts feeding uh, balls up into the gun. On the other side here is a set screw. It's at the front right there. That holds the uh, thread adapter in place. So we're going to remove that. And then the black thread adapter. This is where your barrel threads into. This has the barrel threading and it slides in and it actually locks this housing in place as well. That's our eye pipe. You see our eye pipe has a threaded or a geared end to it because it needs to attach to a gear so that when we slide the bar back and forth it rotates on the gear. And then uh, we have our, our um, cover for the top. So our cover uh, holds the uh, eye covers in as well. So it's not only is it like the top cover for all this whole area up here, but um, it, oh no, I'm sorry, it doesn't hold the, eye, the eyes in place. It uh, blocks the eyes. So the eyes actually look through that acrylic piece right there. So the eye is, is up against this window, kind of like this. So they're looking through these windows on there. Makes it so that if you break paint or whatever in there, help to keep it off of the actual eye itself. All right, so done. We've taken it apart and maybe you needed to clean it, you broke a ball, whatever you needed to do. Now it needs to go back together. There's a very important screw that we did not remove because we don't need to remove it, but it needs to be in the gun. And it is right here. Okay, this should be Loctited in place there should be no reason for you to ever need to take it out. Um, it just needs to stay there. Okay, so this screw acts as a stop for the um, for the eye pipe. It sits up inside the gun and makes it so that when this rotates, it gets to this position and it hits up against the screw and it stops it from moving. So it it goes up against it just like that. It goes thunk. And it doesn't move. If you have it set up properly, it barely touches it. If you have it set up improperly, it smacks against it. So we don't want that. Uh, we should not need to worry about it being too high or too low if it's set up properly. And I actually don't like the way this one's set up, so I'm going to move it. If it's set up too high, this screw, it'll actually rub against the bolt as the bolt is traveling in and out. So if you have a bolt and it's got scratches along here, like on this red part right here, it's caused by this screw sitting so far up that it's actually riding on the bolt right here. Um, I have seen these screws wiggle loose just through vibration, through shooting. Uh, put a little bit of, a, of a red Loctite on it because once you set it, you shouldn't ever need to take it out again. I just want to make sure that it doesn't sit higher than the um, the housing, the inside housing where the bolt rides through, and you're good. It's very, very important. I've seen a lot of people damage their bolt and then have to end up buying a new bolt because of that. So, uh, all right. So we've got this screw at the right spot. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our eye pipe in and put it to where it is butting up against that screw in there. We want to set it up so that it is in first strike compatibility mode. So we want the opening to be facing directly up. So what we do is we slide the slider all the way forward till it locks in place to the first strike setting. And then we're gonna put this in. And we're gonna rotate this. You can see, turn this like that. Oops, not the right direction. We're gonna rotate this so that the edge right here hits up against the screw in there. And I usually do that by actually over rotating it so that it's sitting on top of the screw like that. And then I rotate backwards until it drops into place just like that. 
Now I know that right here, I am cleared the screw, so I'm the edge of that uh, that uh, toothed section is sitting right up against the screw right there. Now I don't want to lose this position on here. I want to make sure that it stays where it is. So I'm going to drop my case down in like that. And then I'm going to slide this in and it will lock it all in place and won't let it fall out. Um, it's going to go like that. And make sure you have your threaded section towards the front. There we go. Now from this point right here, nothing will fall out. It can't move anywhere. So while I'm holding in the thread adapter at the front with my finger, I'm going to rotate this with um, the side piece right here and just make sure that it rotates freely. If it doesn't, if it grinds or if it binds or it doesn't move, pull it all out and do it again. Because something is wrong inside there. Now once it's good, I'm going to hold it in place again. So I'm holding the uh, thread adapter in at the front. Make sure I'm pushing it back. I'm going to put my set screw in. This set screw comes through the top and pushes against the thread adapter so that it can't slide out. And once that's in there, nothing's going anywhere at that point. You can't pull this out because that thread adapter locks everything in place. Now I can put my, um, my mag guide back in. that and everything looks good. I was wondering where that screw came from. It goes in there. All right, so now it's just putting it back together, which is really, really pretty straightforward. We'll do our eyes first. We're going to put them on the left and the right right there. If you remember when you take it apart, which colors go where, it'll save you some time. We're going to plug it in. And then we're going to make sure that our wires run around the side of the solenoid. They don't go over the top and uh, kind of tuck everything down. And then we want to look at the edge here. We want to make sure that our eye wires are running in the groove on both sides. See how that one has popped up kind of over the top of the groove right there? We want to make sure that they stay behind it. Because when we go to slide the, um, the magwell on, we don't want to pinch those wires at all. So that's on there. Now we can put our frame on. We want to do our frame next before we put the magwell on because we want to slide the magwell over the top of the frame. We can always readjust these sections of eye wire later, but once we put the frame on, we can't plug the eyes in. So we need to plug them in, put the frame on, and then do the magwell. All right, so we're going to have this loose again. We're going to connect our, oops, we got it backwards there, flipped it around. We're going to connect the, um, oh, I guess I did have it right. One of these times, right? We're going to connect the power wire. We're going to slide this up and make sure that it doesn't uh, bend over or flop over on itself and crimp. And we're going to just connect it like that. If this section here doesn't sit flush and this section here doesn't sit flush, your eye wire that we made sure we tucked around the side of the solenoid could be in the way. So just check it to make sure that uh, it's not being pinched by the frame. And then we'll take our screw. So the medium sized screw we pulled out right there compared to those ones, it's going to hold the rear frame assembly. We're going to tighten this down, give it a snug, and then we can set this down. At this point, we can set this wire back in here because now the frame is attached and we don't need to worry about it, uh, the frame dropping off and yanking the wiring out. All right, that can go in there. And then we'd normally just attach a battery to it, but since I don't have a battery up here for this one, we're going to leave it off. And then we're going to close that up right there. All right. So now we're going to move on to the mag well, and we'll go ahead and drop that in there. All right, so as we slide the mag well on, we need to be careful of the wires. I've said that a million times, and you're probably sick of hearing it. 
but it does happen. There's a, a notch cut out right here. You can see that notch. This is for the, um, the feed neck adapter piece. So the notch goes on the side that has the feed neck adapter right there. So we're going to slide it down. We're going to slide it forward. This little indexed area is going to fit into this groove. So I'm up too high right now, which is fine. But then I'm going to slide directly down over the top of it. I'm going to check to make sure my wires are there. Those usually are good. The white side typically doesn't have too many issues. It's this side over here that you have to be careful with. So I'm going to hold it down with my thumb and I'm going to slide over the top of it. And before I just push it all the way up, I'm going to flip it over again and check my wiring over here. Make sure it hasn't pinched and is getting stuck in this area right here. It all looks good in there right now. So I should be able to just push it all the way up. So now I can take the long, the four long screws and reattach them. I'm not going to tighten them all the way down yet. next and we're always as we put the bolt in we never just push it through really hard because you'll end up cutting all of these o-rings that are on here we're going to put the front in and we're going to rotate we're always going to turn clockwise when we are putting the bolt in so if you're looking at it from the back clockwise obviously when we take the bolt out we have to turn counterclockwise to get the bolt to unscrew um, so that's why you always check the bolt to make sure it hasn't unscrewed sections as we pull it out. But when you're putting the bolt in, you always turn counterclockwise, or I'm sorry, clockwise, and you always push gently. Don't just jam the bolt in there. You'll be surprised how much longer your O-rings hold up. We've reached the bottom there. Now we are going to tighten it up. And literally that's like a turn and a half and you just go to where it, it stops, give it a little snug, and leave it there. You can actually set these up so that you can hand tighten them on and off. That's as tight as it needs to be. It does not need to be wrench tightened on there. Hand tight, a little snug with your hand, and you're done. So now we're going to take our front shroud. We're going to put this back on. Top and bottom. grip. Slide that on. Good. Magazine. Now this magazine is just our parts magazine. It's not actually the, the, uh, the one for feeding paintballs in there. Drop that down. Tight on there. And then last but not least is our stock. Put that on and put that set screw in as well. And we are back together. And hopefully any leak that you've had or any reason that you've taken it apart has been solved and you're ready to go. Well guys, I hope this helps you out with any questions or concerns you have about your paintball gear or products. And as always, for all your paintball needs, shop ansgear.com.